We want to share what lit up the skies in the Philippines last night. It was a fireball, a small, harmless asteroid about three feet long, and it burned up as it entered Earth's atmosphere. NASA says asteroids this size hurtle toward Earth about every two weeks, but this is only the ninth one to have ever been spotted before coming apart. Astronomers at the University of Arizona first spotted the space rock early Wednesday in a program called the Catalina Sky Survey, which is funded by NASA. Again, no damage, mm. but a remarkable light show. Wow. Yeah, it seems like when we do see it, it's a very small streak as opposed Not to something like that, that I would, size. I'd be like worried about that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think there were, there were some, a few calls to uh, local <laughs> police dispatch. Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder too, um, so did they know it was going to do this because like why else, that, that looks like a webcam, but the other one looks like someone's phone and like, how quick are you, I'm not that quick. No, I'm not. With they were phone. younger. Yeah, they, they were already, already young doing, and hip, they, they had their phones out. They're not right. tracking asteroids, are they? I mean, oh, no, not true, so you don't no, know what's coming, it's right? It's something yeah. that, that threatens Earth's survival, right. but right. not one that size. I also have a theory um, that like, if there were ever one, like, the big so ones. big that we right. wouldn't live through it, I, I just think that they wouldn't mention it. Just there's just no advantage really? to it. Yeah, Ooh. there's no advantage. Why? It's like, comforting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, it's like it's that. just going to be panic. And so you're relying on his forecast, right. folks. Yeah. That's, uh, that's just a theory <laughs> that they'd be like, you know what? It's fine. Just forget it. So, uh, good afternoon, history buffs and history lovers. Welcome to a new episode of History by Bike. And um, well, for today's episode, we will not be going out on a bike ride. But, um, well, we will just be uh, staying here at the uh, Casa Fortes and then um, we will be discussing about meteors and meteorites. So, uh, well, what you just saw earlier was a uh, video clip of a meteor, um, well, being uh, caught on video uh, passing through the skies of the Philippines so um, well that made quite a sensation so um, we will be discussing about other meteorites that were recorded and uh, well some of them were actually finds so they were able to uh, retrieve some of the pieces of the meteorite when it impacted here in our country in different locations in the Philippines. So this will be our new episode. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So, um, well, here we go. This is our new episode and a new topic, meteors and meteorites. When the Bondok meteorite was found in 1956 in a remote jungle in Quezon province, no one knew it came from space. Believing it was an iron ore and wanting to know the mining potential of the area, prospectors brought a sample to the Bureau of Mines, now Mines and Geosciences Bureau. In 1959, American meteoriticist Dr. Harvey H. Nininger while visiting the agency, identified it as a meteorite, and the mining project was abandoned. Recognizing the meteorite was of a very rare type, Dr. Nininger decided to retrieve the main mass no matter the cost. Named after Bondok Peninsula, it weighed 888.6 kilograms, 
the largest meteorite found in the Philippines. Through former Senator Lorenzo Tanyada and the relentless effort of John A. Lednicki, it took three and a half years to locate, extract, move, and finally hand it over to Dr. Nininger at the American Meteorites Museum in Sedona, Arizona. The Bondoc meteorite is the fifth confirmed meteorite from the Philippines. It is classified as a stony iron meteorite the rarest type of meteorite, making up less than 2% of all known falls. Specifically, it belongs to a variety called mesosiderite, which apparently formed from enormous cosmic collision likely between the asteroid Vesta and another asteroid body. Pantar At 8.45 a.m. on June 16, 1938, a bright glowing object plummeted from the sky over Lanao del Norte in Mindanao shortly before a shower of meteorite pieces fell on the town of Pantar. Thousands of people, both Filipinos and Americans, witnessed a series of thunderous explosions, a trail of ringlets of smoke and dust clouds in the wake of the meteorite. One fragment that fell on a rice field and later collected from a depth of one meter weighs just over two kilograms. Meanwhile, thousands of fragments, as small as corn and rice grains, fell like rain onto the roofs of several houses. Thirteen stones were collected by H.J. Detrick, a hotel operator in Dansalan and sent to the American Meteorite Laboratory in Colorado, unexpectedly securing it against the Japanese invasion a few years later. The Pantar Meteorite is the fourth confirmed meteorite from the Philippines. It is classified as an H5 ordinary crondite and likely originated in the asteroid belt. Orkonuma, a piece of space. On the sunny morning of March 7, 2011, three farmers in Oriental Mindoro saw something astonishing. While clearing brush in the field, Fredo Manzano, Edgar Francisco Sr., and Enrico Camacho Jr. were startled to hear thunderclaps from a clear sky. The loud explosion made six consecutive booms that seemed to last for half a minute. While looking up, they saw a red burning object with sparks coming off, roaring over the field and leaving a trail of heavy smoke. The ground rumbled and shook as it plummeted and buried itself deep into the earth in Barangay Orkonuma in Bongabong. They investigated and found a hole in the ground surrounded by disturbed soil and scorched grass. A black rock weighing 7.8 kilograms, sat at the bottom of the one meter deep hole. Worried someone may try to take it from them, they buried it for a year and later excavated and stored the specimen in Manzano's closet for eight long years. Eventually, the rock found its way into the hands of collectors John Higgins and Jasper Spencer, who confirmed that it was a meteorite. In 2021, the meteorite was given the official name Orkonuma by the Meteoritical Society after the place where it was found. Orkonuma is the latest among the only six confirmed meteorites from the Philippines. Okay, so we're finished discussing about um, meteorites and the... Uh, several meteorites that were uh, able to be uh, collected here in the Philippines. Now, the next part of our topic will be about tektites. Now, I want you to watch this next video so you can have an idea of what tektites are. So, um, hear this. Watch the video.
Hello, my name is Garrett Barmore. I'm the curator here at the WM Keck Earth Science and Mineral Engineering Museum. And welcome to Mineral Monday. Let's see what we have inside. Hello, today we're talking about tektites, which is one of my favorite objects to talk about. The word tektite is derived from the Greek word tektos, which means to melt or melt it. Tektites were first discovered or first described in China about 900 BC. And until the 20th century, most scientists didn't know how they were formed. And even today, there's debate about their formation. In the 1950s, scientists thought they might have been formed when a meteorite struck the moon and material went through the Earth's atmosphere. But most scientists agree today that how they were probably formed is by a meteorite striking granite-rich soil. Because tektites are formed when granite-rich soil is rapidly heated, then rapidly cooled. And there's very few things that can do that. When a meteorite hits the soil, it transfers its energy rapidly into the soil, heating it, and then expels the pieces that will become tektites through the air, thus rapidly cooling them. This would also explain why some tektites can be found hundreds of miles away from impact areas. Tektites are generally black, greenish black, and can sometimes be kind of a yellow greenish. Tektites can, can be anywhere between a few grams to 12.8 grams or 28 pounds, quite large. If you would like to see our tektites, they're on display on the main floor of the main gallery in case number 21. And I'll see you next Mineral Monday. Tektites are usually a few inches in size and look like very dark green or black glass. The largest ever found weighed in at 7 pounds or 3.2 kilograms. Analysis of tektites has shown that they contain a variety of minerals. Tektites found in the Philippines, for example, contain small amounts of nickel and iron-based minerals. These are similar to those found in the type of meteorites called siderites. Other tektites found in Australasia, australites, show signs of having been heated very strongly, not once as would happen on entering the Earth's atmosphere, but twice. This could be interpreted as evidence that the tektites, having been formed in some hot environment out in space, entered the Earth's atmosphere, undergoing a second heating, this time from friction with the air molecules in the atmosphere. Right, so this will be the end of our episode for today on History by Bike, and I hope you enjoyed the uh, watching the video and learning something about meteors and meteorites as well as tektites so um, I would urge you to uh, like share and subscribe to my youtube channel and this is history by bike I will be signing off here at Casa Fortes and um, well see you on our next video and uh, thank you very much for watching